Jesus once said, his master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. We meet today in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Welcome to our online service of Holy Communion today. Back online, I'm afraid, and not uh, meeting in flesh in the church, but lovely to be together nevertheless. For those who don't know me, my name is Debbie Pow, and I'm Associate Priest at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. It's wonderful to be able to welcome you into my own home, into my dining room, in fact. Um, as we meet in our own homes, just as in many ways as the early church met, with our faith right in the core and the heart of where we do our life. The liturgy for today's service is on St Stephen's website. That's www.stephensbath.org.uk and a look to the services page and you'll find it there. This is a communion service and God is both inside and outside of time and space. And so it's our belief that whilst we are physically apart, we are together in spirit. And when it comes to the part of the service where we share bread and wine, you may like to have some bread and wine with you uh, to take at the same time as I do. If you're not happy with that, not comfortable with that, then please don't worry and just rest assured that uh, I take communion on behalf of all in our benefits. So as we come to our service, let's just take a moment to pause before we pray together. And we pray together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbour in the same manner that you love yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So, my brothers and sisters, not out of dread or fear, but drawn by love and believing that God is faithful to forgive, let us rid ourselves of those things we no longer need to carry. We remember before God the sins and the shortcomings of the whole world. All that binds us and blinds us. It's pride, it's selfishness. It's greed, it's evil distortions and hatred. And as we remember those, let us remember and confess our share in what is wrong. Our failure to love, to seek and to establish that peace which God wills for, his, for all his people. Just take a moment to bring those things before God. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we, sh we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as for God's forgiven people, let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a prayer for today. Merciful God, resisting the iron fist which reaps where it did not sow, give us courage to accept your faith in us and compassion to stand with all who are cast aside through Jesus Christ, who became nothing, that we might be had for everything. Amen. Our first reading is going to be read for us now by Jason Ambrose from St Stephen's Church. Thessalonians 5 verses 1 through 11. The day of the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety... Destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that, whether we be awake or be asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, For it is, is, uh, it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents but the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, 
bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you have handed, handed me over to, to, over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who'd received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested in my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what is my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, the last week has been quite a week, hasn't it? First, there were the results of the American presidential election. And then there was the news that we've all been waiting for, that uh, one of the virus, uh, coronavirus vaccines that's been in development has shown some really good results and may well be coming into production uh, in the next few months. But you know, things are never quite as straightforward as they seem. President Trump has been reluctant to concede defeat. And actually reading about the lawsuits that face him um, once his pre presidential immunity passes, I'm not at all surprised. For all his bravado and his bluster, he is a human being and he'd be a strange sort of person if there wasn't some fear uh, at those things that are to come. It may well be fear that is causing him to react in such an aggressive way to his defeat. You know, in the farming industry, we have an expression for this sort of aggressive behaviour. We say it's being uh, behaving uh, like a cornered rat. Rats, when uh, they're left to their own devices, will run away when they're afraid. But if they're cornered, they will fight back, uh, uh, fight and attack ferociously. And on the vaccine front too, it was only a couple of days after we heard the news about the vaccine and all the euphoria of that, that this seemed to be a, a wall of fear come down. There were questions of, what, would you take the jab? Is the vaccine safe? And of course, it's absolutely right to make sure that it is, uh, it is safe. We don't want to have more problems from the vaccine than we've had from the coronavirus itself. But vaccines, especially in the West, are tested rigorously. And whilst we can't ever get away from risk, there's risk of a bad reaction to a vaccine, there's, there's a risk of a bad reaction to the virus. We can at least keep it in perspective. It's one of the things that I've noticed in the last few months as 
been a realisation really that largely the nation isn't risk illiterate anymore. When there's so much legislation ensuring our safety and everything's made as safe and comfortable as it is, we have such little exposure to things of real danger that I think as a nation we're losing the ability to assess risk properly. And it's, I think it's particularly prevalent among younger people who have never faced some of the real dangers and risks in life that uh, so many of our older um, people have done. Risk, of course, is related to fear, or at least our understanding. And let's not be getting things wrong, fear uh, is not always a bad thing. It's enabled, enabled the survival of the human race for thousands of years, and it will continue to do so. But fear can also cripple us when we don't have it in the right perspective, when we've wrongly assessed the risk. It can cause us to freeze. It can cause that uh, all too familiar feeling in the pit of our stomachs when we have to face something we're afraid of. It can cause us to run in the opposite direction, to flee. Or, as we've also already mentioned, uh, can cause us to fight back aggressively. But one of the most commonly used phrases in throughout the whole of scripture is, do not be afraid, fear not. There's a recognition that fear is common to all and that with God, we don't have to be afraid. The parable that we heard this morning is about many things. It's often interpreted uh, as, on its face value as being an exhortation to make the most of what God has given us and to use it for God, the benefit of glory of God and for our fellow human beings. But if we look at that uh, parable just in the way of uh, using what we've been given, then we're very much encouraged to think that we get what we deserve. There are rewards for effort, that we can earn love and recognition. And that's rarely the message of Christ. What Jesus shows us time and time again is God's unfailing love for all, whether they're deserve, deserving of his love or not. Though we do have to remember that uh, in receiving God's love, we have to acknowledge its existence and to receive it. But when we dig into that parable, we find there's so much more to it. First, we have to remember that it is a parable and there will be a twist in it. And when we look into the context that it was written in, um, we can begin to understand some of the nuances that were uh, understood by Jesus' listeners that perhaps we've missed today. The first thing to note is probably that a talent isn't a gift that God gives, that uh, we are blessed with. It is an, an, a, it's a, a quantity of money. Our understanding of the word talent actually comes from this uh, parable, but, uh, but it was a, a huge sum of money. It was about over 15 times the average person's uh, annual salary. So in terms of, of today's money, that would be a talent was about half a million pounds. Five talents, two and a half million pounds. It was a huge amount of money to entrust to a slave. We also have to remember that in the context of the day, to bury a treasure and keep it safe was seen as considered to be a good and wise thing. And even today, the police say that the safest place to keep your valuables is buried in a hole in the garden. We also need to remember that to invest money and 
to, to make money in that way involves a certain amount of risk. There's risk to, to gain more money, but the more likely we are to gain more money, also the higher the risk that we lose everything. And I'm sure that the, um, the master would have been very aware of that uh, as well. So when the, the, the first two uh, slaves come to the master with their increased wealth, he praises them. Yet he was also, must also have been aware that they risked losing everything. It's interesting that in, Jesus, in the, the master's praise of the, the slaves, he treats the first two very similarly. Both are praised for their endeavours. So we understand that it's not how much they were given that is important as what they actually did with it and their attitudes. The master understands the abilities of his slave just as God understands our abilities and the master only gives the slaves what he thinks they're capable of looking after. He understood that the one he gave one talented to had more limited abilities but still he blessed him with a huge amount of money. So what is going on between with that relationship between those different slaves and the master? The first two must have felt sufficiently comfortable with their master to be able to work not only for their benefit, but for their master's benefit. And to be prepared to risk what was their master's money in their investment however they invested that. They may have had sleepless nights over how the, the, the investment was going, yet they were comfortable with that risk. There's obviously love in their relationship that gives them the security to be able to behave as they do. When the master returns, he praises them for that uh, love and investment of their time and their effort and their risk. And he elevates them in giving them more. He's elevating them more into the position that he is in, no longer just slaves. But the contrast then is between those first two slaves and the third. The third is consumed by fear, fear for his master whom he has content with and fear for getting things wrong. He has no respect for his master, even though he is entrusted with such a huge amount of money. That first third slave probably knew the right thing to do. But he allowed fear to rob him of doing it. And I'm sure I can't be the only one who can identify with that. Very aware that I can talk myself out of doing what I know is right by the negative thoughts that will come into my mind. Soft fears, perhaps we might turn them, but negative thoughts nevertheless. Or of letting fears limit what I think, what I can achieve, fears and negativity. It's not really just the experience of fear that's the issue because we all experience it. It's what we do with it that is important. Do we recognise it and assess it? Or do we let, us, let it consume us? The master takes many years to come back and the third slave has obviously nursed those resentments, those fears, that all that negativity over all that time 
And when he meets again with his master, he throws it back in his face, only to find the master returning it back onto him. It's rather like that self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? When you believe you can't do something, you don't do it and therefore you can't do it. Jesus told this parable during the last days of his life. He told it as part of a series of four stories that indicates how we should behave in that period between his death and his coming again. That period that we all still live in. So it's guidance for us. Jesus always shows us the love of God. And it's in that love that he wants us to flourish, not in the fear. It's love that allows us to take risks. It's love that allows us to confront our fears. It's love that enables us to grow. So I wonder, as we reflect on this parable and the extravagance of the master, what is the abundance that God has given to us to steward, each one of us, to me, to you? How do we view God? Do we know his love? Or do we approach him with fear? Are we prepared to take risks for God, for his kingdom, for others, in our love for him and his for us? Or do we allow fear to limit what we do. Amen. So as we dwell on God's love for us and our reactions to fear, let's declare our faith in God. In the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Judith Pepler from St Mary's will lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray to God, the only giver of power for good, and let us come before God our Father with our burdens, cares and joys. May all who confess your name be faithful stewards of what has been entrusted to them. As we look for the coming of Christ, we pray that the Church on earth may always be ready to come, become one with the Church of the Blessed in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless our Christian family, both in this Church and throughout the world. May we witness to your love by the kind of lives we lead and the work done in your name. As we work for the present good, let our eyes be lifted to the future glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw into your service all in our community that they may be used for the coming of your kingdom. 
shine your love on us, our families and friends, that we may live as children of light. Bless and guide the leaders of all countries and communities, and we pray for all who serve in positions of authority here and throughout the world, for all debates and international talks. May the power of reason you have given us lead us towards your truth and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to those who tend the sick and to the sick who suffer in body, mind and spirit, remembering Valerie Brooke, Bill Fraser, Martin Richardson, Sally Pym, Muriel Bird, and Jean and Paul Vosper, and Reese, and Mavis. Comfort all who suffer and give them patience and courage. Let their hopes be fulfilled that they may look forward to a new and richer life of loving trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all life, before whose face the generations come and go, we pray for those who have recently died. For Brian Darch, David Simons, Pauline Skinner, Tony and Lynn Eads, Penny Root. And for those whose anniversary we recall, especially Thomas Watts and Frederick Horsell. Grant your peace to the faithful departed, that they may enjoy the perfection of those good things which they partially knew in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With St Mary, St Stephen, and with all the company of saints, we rejoice in fellowship and communion, and we share in their lively joy. Into your gracious keeping and unfailing love, we commend ourselves and all believers. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray also for the family of Elizabeth Blackman, who died recently. Elizabeth was a former member of St Stephen's Church, and her name was missed off the list that Judith was given. So we pray for Caroline, for David and for Hilary. As they, go, as they grieve and mourn them, the loss of their mother. Friends, we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace Peace to those who were far off and those who were near. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. We're going to have a chance to sing now, uh, or at least to listen to some beautiful singing. Our first hymn has been chosen by Richard and Carolyn Frewer from St Mary's. And they've chosen, come Holy Spirit, our souls inspire.
as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now united in this on this table in bread and wine. So Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Friends, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose our own path, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets. You look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the songs of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Loving God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and raise, reign with him in glory. On the night he gave, him, gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, God, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ, and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, comfort the lonely, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with St Mary, St Stephen and all your saints at the table of your kingdom, in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. With saints and martyrs throughout the ages, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament, you give substance to our hope. Bring us to the last, to that fullness of life for which we long, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may God give to you and to all whom you love all comfort and peace, heaven's light and joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. We have uh, just a few notices. Firstly, our archbishops have called us to, at this time to pray, to pray for our nation and to pray for our world. If you're on our email list, you will have seen Philip's email uh, with details of various prayer times uh, that we will be running uh, prayer times by Zoom. There'll be prayer for our individual churches on Monday mornings uh, at 9.30 to 10 and for the individual churches on Tuesday afternoons at 2 and at 6.30. On Thursday evenings there will be a meditation, Christian meditation at 6.30 and Compline at 9. All the details and the Zoom links are, are on both the email that Philip sent and also on St Stephen's website. Uh, I do need to say that Tuesday afternoon's prayer group won't actually be happening this week as uh, the clergy are all uh, on an, a pre-advent retreat. Uh, I just like to remind you that there is a, a post-service Zoom on a Sunday morning now from 11am. Um, 
Again, the link is uh, in the email that Philip sent and on St Stephen's website. If you do have any troubles joining, do email me uh, this week at debbie at stephensbath.org.uk. If you haven't signed up to our emails or uh, if you think you have signed up and you've stopped receiving them for some reason, do get in touch with either Philip or myself. Uh, it's a great way of being able to share a lot of what is going on in our churches, especially at this time when things change so quickly. You may have uh, come across our Advent Windows initiative uh, that will be running in Ensley and around Lansdowne. That is a series of windows uh, lit and decorated for Advent and with an each one, uh, a new one being revealed each day through Advent, rather like a giant Advent calendar. Uh, we still have a few uh, vacancies for both Ensley and Lansdowne. So if you'd like to take part and you live in either of those areas, or if you know someone in those areas uh, who might like to take part, do please uh, tell them about it and contact us. Again, you can use my email address, debbiehitsaintstephensbath.org.uk or Phillips, who is similarly Philip at St Stephen's Bath, etc. We have a final hymn now to sing, and it's been chosen for us by Hester Davies of St Stephen's. Hester's chosen, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Let's sing together. So we come to our closing liturgy. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end of God's greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. All your works praise you, Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the kindness of your kingdom and speak of your power and peace. My mouth shall speak of the praise of the Lord. Let everything bless God's holy name forever and ever. So go in peace.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.